All right. What did you guys think of that? Interesting. Absolutely mind blowing. <laughs> I really like that. Um, yeah, as I said, the last but the last five or six minutes to me was the most fascinating part of that whole video. I think that one thing was absent was the the, the there was no discussion of entropy, no uh, mention of it. Yeah, look, I think they cover entropy in and actually in the next one. So uh, to, in quite a lot of details. I mean, you can't discuss everything every time. Yeah. In fact, I think the next, next lot of three or four or five titles are all quite interesting. And we can just touch on them quickly. Um, all right, so we're on 20. 21 is what are the hidden rules of the universe? 22, why is everything made of atoms? 23, have we really found the theory of everything? 24, how does light actually work? 25, is time travel pos possible in our universe? So I think we've got quite a few, you know, quite interesting titles coming up in the next few months. So stay tuned. Okay. Uh, Derek, could I just ask you to clarify something? Sure. Go on. Um, that that uh, a linear Kayla, Okay, I'm not quite sure where it is, that golden string light structure. Are we actually part of, is our, is our galaxy part of that linear Kala? Um, I'd have to go back through the video and, yeah, I think it is. I think it's a fairly recent it's discovery, okay. something I've actually heard of and know about. So... Um, Isn't linear Kala the local superstructure? Yeah, it is. It is a superstructure. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think we are part of it. Yes. I'm not sure. Okay, okay. And and then just another question. I, I I always read that we are living in a local hole. I don't know if a local hole is our galaxy or our solar system or linear Kala or where is this local hole that we're living in? Uh, maybe I must just share that again and see if I can find that. Um... Just so sure. 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 Did you see this? Whereas Shapley pulls, this area of space doesn't literally repel. Can you see Lana Kaya in this? I think it's too too small to show up, it covers too much of a. But I mean, you know, this whole thing of the the universe is expanding equally all over. To me, this totally sort of negates that whole you know, thing. Things are going in different directions in, in one direction, in one big section of the universe, in a different direction, in a, another big section. So things are not quite as uniform as the Lambda CDM model is supposed to depict, I think. No. Derek, so, doesn't that depend on what scale we're looking at? Because you can get a lot of local events. Yeah, when yeah, you, it is. You've got Andromeda being attracted and Milky Way moving towards each other, but overall galaxies are moving apart. So you, we need to know the scale of this attractor versus the repeller to see whether the effect is a local one or actually part of the bigger picture. Yeah, I think one must, I don't know if this, he's got a lot of very nice graphics in this video. One must go through and look at it again. Maybe one can. 250 million light years away. Ah, oh, you see this. You can probably find other graphics and probably, I can probably Google it and try and get more of a sense of how much of the sky is covered by these things they're, they're talking about. 
Um, I have also, by the way, done a um, um, a transcript. So that that will also be available. Let me just see if I can find that quickly. Yeah, no, that's always very helpful. Thank you. Now, this, let me just share that again. Share screen. Share that. Yeah, okay. So this is the transcript. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't put a lot of graphics in there. It takes too long. So this is just the... Yeah, so you can read through, find something, and more or less see where in the video it might be, and then go back. I don't know. Okay, thanks, Derek. Right, so we'll send that, that transcript out to everybody. Um, again, uh, maybe uh, if you think of some stuff and maybe put through a general email to the group or something with a list of list of questions and uh, you know, uh, we can do a little bit of research on, on some of the points which we have questions about in the meantime, before the next meeting. Uh, we keep on saying that, but we don't never seem to get it get down to doing that. So, um, Elaine, would you like to do that? Make some bullet points of your, your uh, questions and points raised and what you would like to see, like where where in the universe does line occur or whatever fit in and how big is it really? <laughs> how does how, where are we okay. relative to it and all these sort of things? I'm Thanks, at... Derek. Thank you. I, I got there on my phone. So I, I have actually been watching it and I was totally lost long before Elaine was. So, uh, but yeah, fascinating. I just always wonder how does something like our uh, homebred Hermanus uh, Pierre Hugo theory fit into all this as well because it always just amazed me that from all those cosmology lectures he was able to put together a picture of all this happening and, and how much of this still kind of relates to that uh, you know there's just so much that keeps coming as these telescopes get further away and the whole picture just gets bigger and bigger um, well, look, his, his whole, he was trying to nail down what gravity is I think he had some good points. I don't know if I agree with everything he said, but I think it definitely was something in what he was saying. So that's all I could comment at the moment. So it was his view of gravity. Uh, look, I mean, you know, we know what Einstein mathematically did with gravity, but, you know, we still don't really know what gravity is and what, why it, why it arises and where it comes from and why does it only go one direction and so on. Sure. So, yeah. This, these are still mysteries to us. Indeed. Thank Derek, you. Derek, well, as I said, we've got a couple of interesting titles coming up. Uh, one, one is why why is everything made of atoms? That that could uh, be sort of have an angle where where um, yeah, Hugo's views could also fit in, in in a little bit. And when we get to that, we, I can sort of enlarge on that. But essentially, yeah, yeah, I think that'll be quite an interesting one. Thank you. Yeah, D Derek, I have a sort of fundamental question. I, the graphics that are that make up this um, this uh, lecture today are absolutely amazing. Yeah. The way the graphics are generated. But a very simple question: How do we know actually uh, what our galaxy? Milky Way galaxy looks like. It looks like a photograph taken from outside. But how how do they generate such a picture of our galaxy? So obviously that's a, a simulation based on measurements made, you know, from observations with telescopes and space telescopes and stuff, um, you know, with speeds and distances and so on. They can they can sort of cobble it all together and and uh, and you know, and then obviously seeing examples of similar galaxies out in space gives you the inspiration as to what it would look like. But, you know, they can see the bright area in the center. They can see that it is a bar. It's not 
spherical or globular or whatever. Uh, Peter, have you got a, something to add to that? See what yeah, yeah, I just, um, I sort of equated in my, in my mind's eye with the mapping of the, the, the Earth by the early um, um, uh, navigators. Um, they could only see it from the side. They saw all the continents from the side, but by mapping, careful mapping, they were able to generate a an overhead view. Um, it, it, I don't know. I imagine with the scientific um, mapping today, it, it it must be sort of similar in principle. That's my guess, anyway. Yeah, I think that's a, that's quite a good sort of analogy, uh, Peter. Thanks. Yeah, so I mean, they'd be measuring, as I say, measuring the distances from us to all the stars in the in our galaxy, and therefore know, uh, therefore sort of build up a three dimensional picture of our galaxy. Uh, thank, thank you very much. I, yeah, the mind boggles at the computer power uh, being used to generate such pictures nowadays. It's it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, never mind our galaxy. I mean, look at that whole thing of the great attractor and so on. All the things they've now measured and observed to be flowing towards the great attractor. I mean, that's, you know, at vast distances from, away from our galaxy. You know, that's all done by measuring the relative speeds and of, of things. And in that, of course, they're measuring speeds of galaxies moving towards the great attractor. And, and the other place moving away from the other thing where things are expanding. It'll be interesting that to learn. Aspect... So, sorry. 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 No, Go keep ahead, going, David. No, keep going, David. I, I was going to say that confused me a bit about that. That's all traveling towards that attractor. Um, so Jenny's earlier comment about us moving apart, that, that dispels that somewhat. We're moving towards this great attractor. Uh, that's, I've never heard of that before. Yeah, that's a definite thing. I mean, it's a definite observation, but it's a, as, as Jenny said, it's a local observation. Um, you know, within the universe, everything is still expanding on average. But within, uh, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, like the Earth is going orbiting around the Sun, and the Sun's orbiting around the center of the Milky Way. It's uh, you know, it's different motions for different reasons in on a local scale. I was just going to say it'd be interesting to see what AI contributes to this whole exploration of the origin of the universe and its nature, because it you know it's going to do things. It's going to make come up with ideas and process data and things. It's going to make us have to sort of stop and think. Yeah, you, you've got to be a little bit wary and skeptical and, and careful of AI generated information though. Yeah. Um, it's, it's I've, a, heard of, a, I've heard of somebody that um, uh, asked AI for to write an article on something, I can't remember what, something to do with property. Um, and uh, this was these. There were a couple of lawyers in some meeting in in uh, in New Zealand, and they were discussing something. I can't remember. Somebody wrote some some legal document and asked AI to write it. And this AI referred to articles written by two people who actually exist. Uh, but those two people happened to be in the meeting, and they both stood up and said, "We never wrote any article like that." So this this uh, AI actually wrote very convincing articles, had actually um, researched the sort of articles that those two people had written, and written something which looked like it had been written by them, but never was. Yeah, I mean, you always have to question everything, but you but have AI... to question everything with AI. Yeah, but AI is definitely going to widen or open new possibilities and come up with new, uh, you know, and in that sort of very imprecise subject like looking at cosmology these are huge you know not just physically huge it's i mean that there's so many variables and so so much is actually poorly understood mm. and ai is just going to add to that picture and as you say it could be helpful maybe obstructive but it's going to have an impact and it's an obvious thing for them to use 
Yeah, you know, AI is becoming data. much more powerful in, uh, quite rapidly, this. I think. So, yeah. yeah, they've got it's huge amounts of data in astronomy. But give it to AI, see what it comes up with, you know, type of thinking. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting in the in the near future. Uh, with Jenny, also, we were at graphics. We do. Uh, you, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, David, go ahead. David, make this go ahead. What's happened to David now? David, we can't hear you. No, 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 I, I couldn't unlock. Sorry. I was just saying that uh, Mike, Mick, uh, Jenny, and I were at the same U3A meeting this morning, which talked about the geology of the Table, table Mountain group. And it was fascinating. And at the end of the, somebody asked a question saying that with all the knowledge that uh, various geologists have developed over the many years of the of the geology of the Cape, that the, in future lectures could be could put together by AI, uh, accessing all that knowledge. I thought that was quite an interesting observation because that that all the stuff is there. It doesn't have to invent anything itself. It just has to pull it all together in a presentable format. Yeah, some of the big breakthroughs are, of course, in medicine, where uh, AI can can take symptoms and come up with a much more accurate diagnosis than any group of a thousand doctors together can, looking at the same thing simultaneously and within seconds. Uh, there, there are going to be bre big breakthroughs on, on yeah. a lot of no, levels of AI. In, we live in interesting times. Yeah. Yeah. What were you going to no, say? Sorry, what? I was just going to say with, with graphics, by reducing things to graphics, we are limiting our, uh, you know, just a very small part of wave structures, aren't we? I mean, our site is is only able to handle a minuscule part. So, I mean, what we're looking at in those pictures are really all sorts of other waves, like the electric ones and the, uh, you know, these new ones that, that he's raising that are now. So you can almost have some of the photons going in, whereas something else from another structure can be going out. Uh, and as you say, all of it, depending on how how, uh, how sort of locally you're looking at it. Um, but uh, it certainly stretches the mind. It just, again, just shows the more you find out, the more there is to to learn. So uh, it's, uh, it's just fascinating and very humbling. Yeah. All right. My other half has just arrived home. Um, have we got any more comments on the in the discussion? Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, thank you very much, Derek and Peter. Thanks, Derek. Right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. All right. Thank thanks. Um, so let's knock it off then and see. Let's do some. Uh, if if you come up with some answers to some of the questions we've asked this evening, please let us all know. But I'll have a look as well. Okay. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. Bye. All right.